Hey, what's up, YouTube? How's it going? Um, I got some more progress to share with you this week. I worked on a bunch of little things. I got a lot of bugs fixed and I added a monster to the game. Um, he's this big crab guy with spikes on his back. I call him the spiker. And I thought it would be a good time to share with you how I make monsters and NPCs in my game and maybe show you a little bit under the hood uh, how they work. So let's get into it. The first thing I think about when I'm uh, designing a new enemy type is uh, how that enemy is going to change the player's behavior. Um, and in my game, most enemies, at least at first, uh, the most effective strategy was just to run in and, you know, fire and just keep firing until everything was dead. Um, so with this enemy, the spiker, uh, I wanted to maybe punish that behavior or at least change it and make sure that it wasn't always the most effective strategy. So with the spiker, uh, you'll notice he pops down into that little shell. And if I hit him when he's in that little shell, um, he's going to reflect damage back at me. So here, let me uh, show you that. There we go. See, I took some damage here. There you go. And he should pop back out of there eventually. There he goes. And um, yeah, it's cool. So now you have to think twice before just firing into a big crowd of enemies. And we'll heal ourselves back up. Cool. Yeah, I really like how it changes up the uh, the pacing of combat because normally I'm just like blowing through enemies and now you really have to like slow down a little bit more and time your attacks rather than just blindly firing in. But our little crab guy didn't actually start out looking like this. Um, he actually began life looking a little more like this. Um, so not quite as pretty. Um, this is what I call a gameplay block out. I generally take an existing character and, you know, just change the material or make it look visually different in some way. In, in this case, I just stuck a sphere on the back of his head, and that was perfect uh, for testing out the spike mechanic. Uh, I could just turn this thing on or off, and very clearly I could tell what was going on from a gameplay perspective. And that's really uh, the purpose of this model, right? Like, uh, it lets me test out the gameplay without having to invest any time in the visuals, so it's no big deal if I have to throw it away. I usually, you know, I can make like one of these a night, sometimes even more, and that's great because I can just try this out without having to, you know, put a lot of time into the art or anything. And if it's not fun, I can just toss it and it's no sweat off my back. I prototype in very much the same way on the code side too. I never really want to start from scratch with anything. So I have this shared class called NPC AI that is a container of all the different basic behaviors that NPCs might have in my game. Um, so when I start on a new monster, they already know how to walk and move and attack and die, which is great. It saves me a lot of time. And then I can build on top of that to create unique monsters. So this is basically how it works. While an enemy is alive, they have a few different states they can jump between. So idle, move, they can attack. And depending on what conditions are met, they can jump between those states. So if by default we say they're in the idle state, um, maybe once the NPC sees that the player is inside of its target zone, I have this other target manager class which prioritizes targets, but let's say, so hey, the player has moved into an enemy's target zone, um, now we're in the move state. And okay, now the player is within the enemy's attack range and the enemy has line of sight on it, okay, now we're in the attack state. And it's going to just keep jumping between those states until this alive variable is no longer true. So until it's dead. Um, this is kind of what it looks like in code. And yeah, this is really great. It's, um, I mean, long story short, this basically just allows me to, to start with a basic set of building blocks and layer on top of these. I can override these states to create all kinds of um, different behaviors and different monsters really, really quickly. So once I'm happy with how the gameplay feels, I will start to push the art to final. Um, and usually the first step of that is to do a couple of quick sculpts um, and then eventually end up with uh, something that looks like this. This is kind of a, 
Um, this is my finished high poly. It's still kind of simple, but that's the style of my game. Uh, I really need things to read from way out here. Um, so I'm, I'm mostly only concerned with the larger shapes and kind of the macro like silhouette. But yeah, even still, this thing is pretty high poly. It's over 100,000 triangles. I don't, I don't think you'd want too many of those guys running around in your game. So I usually, or I mean, I always <laughs> build uh, this little low poly mesh and I transfer the details from one mesh to the other. So you can see here, this model doesn't actually contain these bumps, but via the texture, uh, I'm able to kind of trick or like modify the surface of the mesh to look like uh, look like there's more detail than there actually is here. Because this is only, you know, 4,700. Um, so it's, it's quite a bit lower than the original high poly. Um, the next step after that is rigging and animation. Um, so this is definitely not my forte, but I actually enjoy it a lot. Uh, so like, <clears throat> I'll start moving this thing around, kind of like a puppet. I, I I built this skeleton and then I kind of, um, I do this thing called skinning where you in you tell the vert how much, how much influence each bone is going to have onto it. So in this case, I can see like, okay, this, this little area I have selected is gonna be influenced by this bo bone here, right? Um, and you can kind of, I kind of do that throughout the whole mesh um, until you get something like this, where now all the verts follow the bones appropriately. And here, this is kind of my walk animation. He kind of scuttles around. Um, and then he goes into this idle. And then he does his attack animation. And then here's his, that's that little shell up where he goes defensive. And then he pops back out. And then here's his death. Oh, he's done. Okay, so a bonus feature for anybody who stuck around this long. Um, this wasn't the biggest thing I worked on this week, obviously, but I still think it was pretty cool. So if you look now, you can see the characters' heads turn as as they get close to each other within a certain range. So they're not statues anymore when they walk by. I think it's it's a little thing, but it makes them feel so much more alive. That's it for this update. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe, um, and I will see you in the next video.